Okay, so we've talked about our other uh, organic compounds, which included the lipids, the carbohydrates, and the proteins. The <clears throat> last two that we're going to talk about are the nucleic acids and ATP. Now, we're just going to give a brief overview uh, over the nucleic acids right now. Uh, we're going to have a further discussion in terms of how DNA, RNA uh, are involved in protein synthesis a little bit later on. <clears throat> but DNA and RNA are the nucleic acids. Now, DNA provides basically the blueprint for life. Uh, when we talk about a gene, we are talking about a strand of DNA that codes for specific proteins that uh, our body can build, which proteins, the actual machinery that allows our bodies to function. Now, this code is made of um, basically five nucleotide bases. Um, we have adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Now, in DNA, that's adenine, guanine, cytosine, and the thymine. Uh, in RNA, it's adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So we swap out the thymine and uracil between DNA and RNA. As you can see here, the structure uh, of a nucleotide, which is the monomer again of a nucleic acid, the structure is a phosphate, a sugar, and um, then one of our nucleotide bases. So when we take a look at the way these are organized, <clears throat> um, these nucleotide bases have uh, what we call complementary base pairing. And that is that if I have a strand of DNA on one side, and I have a bit of adenine, for instance, as we see right here, it will always pair up with thymine on the other side. And DNA is in this twisted ladder configuration. So this allows us to duplicate the DNA very easily. All we have to do is untwist that ladder and get our separate halves and if I've got half of that ladder, I know that on the other half, uh, what there had to have been. Everywhere I've got an adenine, adenine, there had to have been a thymine. Everywhere there was a cytosine, there had to be a guanine. Adenine and thymine, guanine and cytosine, all the way down. So I can duplicate that strand very, very easily. Now, this replication is something that does occur before cell division also known as uh, mitosis, and the strands of DNA contain the genetic code in terms of genes which provide instructions for every protein that's in our body. So when we talk about a gene, what it does, we're talking about a specific bit that codes for a protein. The other nucleic acid is RNA. Now, DNA is called DNA because it has a sugar that is deoxyribose. RNA has ribose. DNA is double-stranded, as you can see here. RNA has a single strand. And as we said before, we replace thymine that's in DNA with um, uracil in RNA. Now, both DNA and RNA are involved in the production of proteins. And there are several types of RNA, which we will discuss a little bit later on. But I just wanted to give you that quick overview here. Now, the other important organic compound is adenosine triphosphate. And this is the currency that our cells use, kind of the chemical energy. Um, what we have are phosphate bonds, and when we say triphosphate, it's this adenine, basically, or adenosine, with three phosphoruses, and, or phosphates, and by breaking one of those bonds so that we have ad, uh, adenosine with two phosphates and a free phosphorus, 
that bond, once it's broken, releases a very specific, discrete packet of energy. Now, we use our food to recycle the ATP. We have, in our whole bodies, very little ATP. We have, you know, an ounce or so. But we recycle this through the course of the day. And if we actually just made new ATP for every use, we'd actually use about 70 pounds of the stuff a day. But I mentioned before that uh, in terms of energy usage, we could break all of our proteins and lipids and everything else down into glucose. Glucose is a sugar that gets fed into some machinery that gives us ATP. Now think of it kind of like the coins that operate vending machines. Well, say I have a $5 bill, I have to feed that $5 bill into a change maker. Um, and then the quarters that I get out, I can actually feed into the machine to make something happen. That's kind of what happens within cells. We have a structure called mitochondria, which breaks down glucose into uh, just carbon dioxide and water and gives us lots of ATP. The structure of ATP is adenine with a ribose sugar and three phosphates. So this is basically a very, very short strand of RNA. Um, anyway, these are the phosphates and we break this bond right here and that releases that packet of energy. Now, we can use this for all sorts of things. We have, say, a specific membrane protein. We can bind ATP to that protein and by binding the ATP we change the shape of the protein a little bit so that it can open or close. Now, so it can move and transport things. We can bind ATP to a structure in muscle, which we'll talk about later on when we get into that, uh, into that chapter. But what that does is that changes the shape of a little component inside of the muscle, which allows it to contract. We can add ATP and we can have reactants and we can cause uh, products to be made. So we get chemical work or mechanical work, transport work, any of a number of types of things, all from breaking down ATP. And that is actually it for our organic compounds. Now we'll talk more about what each of these does and the importance of each of these uh, a little bit later on. We are going to, we have one last discussion for this chapter, which is DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis. So please be sure to review that material. Thank you very much.